Um, to join the conversation, please SMS 081 8038 Kindly note, it's SMS only. All right. Um, <laughs> we have um, Ogechi, a.k.a. Anyawu, and um, she is a journalist, an award-winning <laughs> journalist. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We yeah. don't have so much time. Now, the world, of course, has a new bold agenda for sustainable development adopted by the international community in September 2015 to wipe out poverty through 17 sustainable development goals by 2030. These ambiguous goals were unanimously adopted by 193 member states of the United Nations who have prime responsibility to realize them. Education is captured in one goal, um, Sustainable Development Goal 4, which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Like I said, she's an award-winning <laughs> journalist and she pioneered the development desk at The Cable. She has specific interest in sustainable development goals, especially childhood and women issues. Now, welcome, Ogechi. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, let's jump into mm -hmm. this conversation. Agenda for sustainable um, development. Taiwo was here earlier, and Lamy mm -hmm. would not let Taiwo rest. <laughs> She's not quiet. a member of the government. <laughs> <laughs> She's not from the Ministry of Education. No, but what do you think? Uh, because it's actually heartbreaking. Honestly, um, we ask these questions not because we do not know. Mm -hmm. The truth is, if a mind is educated, um, I believe there are so many things that you would know that you cannot do to those people. Like, for instance, you cannot tell me, oh, go and pick a gun and go and, go and rob a bank, because I know the implications of robbing mm -hmm. a bank. Oh, I or, cannot induce you yeah. to vote for me. Or, or you know, or you, can, you can't give me stipends to say, go and vote for me. Or you can't tell yeah. me to go and scoop petrol mm -hmm. from, uh, from you know, it, where there's spillage, because I know the You understand the value. I understand the consequences. Yeah. If anything should just go wrong, you know, so what do you think the challenges are when it comes to education and why haven't we gotten it right? The challenges are numerous. Mm -hmm. They're too numerous to start to list them. But first of all, I would say poor quality teachers. That an outdated curriculum and methodology. And also not understanding the learning styles of children and the different kinds of intelligences that exist. And so, it, it, I mean, we know about this popular saying, if you, if you put a fish in, I don't know, something, uh, you put somebody in a pool or you put a fish somewhere and he cannot thrive, it's, it doesn't make sense. You can't take a fish you on, can't the, take on a the fish. tree and expect it to yeah. fly. To fly, oh, yeah. that sort of thing. Or the shark tank. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's outdated yeah. curriculum. It's not, uh, not realizing that there are different learning styles and there are different talents and gifts that a child or children can have. And um, forcing a particular form of education that is not holistic on these kids, and these are the problems. And it's also a cultural issue as well, because you can have all the teacher trainings, and then they can be they can go for all kinds of trainings. But if the people are not open, open to listening and to acquiring this newfound knowledge that they have and applying them, then we are just going to be stuck. And I see that often in schools. I have a son in school, and I know that um, the people are resistant to change. They don't want children who they want. It's, it's you know we're still back at that spot where we want to have memorization of facts. For instance, we're not open to critical thinking and critical analysis. We're not open mm. to so many things that if a child in class questions a teacher, that child is termed rude, rude yeah. as opposed to being you know thinking out of the box assertive. or just being assertive or just you know learning because children are born creative. And what we do actually is take them out of that creative spot through education. So education as it is in Nigeria, and in so many places, not just Nigeria, is outdated and needs to be reinvented. That's what it is. So do you think, now, judging by what the current situation is in Nigeria, with um, the current state of things, when you listen to budget allocations and all of those things that has been allocated mm -hmm. to education and all that, do you think that there's a willingness for the current government to actually invest in education as it is today? Do you see that when you see that, when you see, because the handwriting is on the wall. Is on the wall. Yeah. And you know, because when we're talking education, we're not even limiting it to the primary. 
look at the, the, the tertiary Different institutions. Levels, the okay. six now, three, the technical three, institutions, for instance, because we're trying to solve a um, national problem. We're trying to solve, we're trying to build a nation, right? If we're complaining that we're having bad roads, we're complaining that we're supposed to equip our te technical institutions, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. to build, mm -hmm. you know. So do you see that there's even a, cl there's even a sign of hope that we need, we have invested and this is where we're going? Do you see that at all? Hope. I'm not going to speak about hope. I'm going to talk about what yeah, I listen. see right now. No, no, it's a big no. I mean, if you, if you talk in terms of the budget allocated to education, it's for several years now, it's been 5 to 7%, uh, stretch it to 8%. No, there's no willingness on the part of the government to enhance education. No, there's not. There's also that uh, we're using curriculum that has not been um, updated in years, 20 years, I think. If I'm oh, sorry to cut you. Do you think perhaps uh, the dwindling economy has any role to play in the fact that we haven't allocated as much percentage to education? Oh, no, no, no. no. D dwindling economy, with the, as you were talking about, the lawmakers earning so much. No, no. I so don't you think, think it's so. deliberate? I it's not deliberate. I don't, I I don't want I don't, willpower. I think it's the willpower. No. I, yeah. think, I think also Why? that we do not have, exactly, we do not have, there's no political will to increase the budget for education. There's no political will to educate the people. If you keep the masses, if you keep the people in an uneducated state, you will thrive as a corrupt politician. That's why I said it's deliberate. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm awesome. not going to say that. <laughs> You know, in this present <laughs> age and time, where people are being arrested and kept I even after, it. and <laughs> newspapers are crying out and no, but changing the she official. does have a point when she said. I mean, what, it does look. It feels like it does look. It's like deliberate it's because yes. if the is a lot. Sorry, if a large chunk of the population are ignorant, then the the politicians. So now let's just say we fly. take out government because we're trying to have a conversation here. Yeah. Let's take out the government. Let's take out everything. What do you say we? can start to do? Let's find solutions. What yeah. do you think we can start to do? Because do you think the solution, because right now, I can bet you, if I know 50 people, 48 of them have left this country. Hmm. And the only reason they give us is that I want a, a better, better life for, for my, my children. children. So yeah. I want to take this child to go where the child will be better educated, mm -hmm. and the child will have a quality life. So they take their children and they take their children abroad. So, and I always used to cringe. I am always cringing when I see that. Because I believe that that is not the solution. But do you think we can start to find solutions? And where do you think those loopholes are? Those solutions are where we can get to start to solve this problem? Because we truly must educate the minds of every citizen yes, in Nigeria yes. to solve mm -hmm. this problem. Yes, because, I mean, the greatest infrastructure that we can have in the country really are educated yes. minds. Yes. So in terms of solution, I would say that they're really at our fingertips. That's technology which has sort of democratized knowledge, and we can harness that. We don't need, necessarily need to add on technology, but use it as a tool for learning. Um, so there's... I think that's implemented, yeah. isn't it? A lot of kids are learning through no. gadgets. Yeah, you see a lot of... Don't, do not... I, you, you, In were private saying, schools. you keep saying private schools, and you keep thinking that Lagos yes. is Nigeria. Lagos mm. is just a really small part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And if you went to rural areas or different states, you will find that that's not even being implemented oh, at all. Valid. Yeah. Very valid. And so we can use that. If the government has the will as well, you can use that. So we have problems of poor quality teachers and we have problems of even specialty teachers and general teaching and we can use technology we just need no so no okay you're getting me wrong okay. i'm saying if the government now has decided because we know that any any corrupt government for instance that want to continue to bribe five five thousand when it comes to elections and they want to bribe their way to 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 win elections they will keep the mind and po um, you know what i think oh, yeah. i think sorry i think this is what um I imagine that is going. I think it's a mind control system. The reason why um, the people in government would not invest so much into education is because when you do that, you offer the people liberty, and so they break loose from that mind control system where you can give them one thousand naira and they sell their rights for four years. That's what I think that is going. That's what I, I, I was saying. Yeah, was Again, deliberate. I know that you cannot have a solution in vacuum. Yeah. You have a government, you're going to have to task them. You're going to have to put them to task. 
You're going to have to demand certain things. Education is a human right. And these are the people that you voted into power. And somehow you're going to have to ask them, demand for these things. How do we do that? Demanding. How do we how, go how, how do we do Because that? somebody called for a revolution yes. and the person is in jail right now. <laughs> I always say with these things, then you have to be diplomatic or, you know, again, intelligent about these things. So maybe not call for a revolution if you wouldn't call for a revolution. But ask questions. Ask about the budget. What has happened to this budget for education? This 8% that you have allocated to education, what is going on? We're supposed it? to ask. You, as a citizen of Nigeria, you ask these questions. You, you have a program here, and then you ask, you, you analyze these things. You can do that. But in the meantime, if you want to say, let's go the non governmental, as citizens, what can we do? Then you have access to the internet. Wow. Maybe volunteer in a public school. But, but I was just want to, but I would like to chip this we in. Will, we will chip that in after the break. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Okay. I mean, we can't exhaust this topic, but we decided to scratch it. We'll probably continue next week, Friday, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk to our producers. Thank you so much for coming. Up next, okay. we'll have. Um, Coin as she joins us for the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>